Hey, welcome back to Cool Classics. Today we're going to take a look at the life and career of Lee Merriweather. You might know her from playing Catwoman in the Batman 66 movie or Dr. Anne McGregor from the Time Tunnel. How about Betty Jones from Barnaby Jones? Well, there's a lot more to her story and I have some cool clips and some freaky facts. So here we go. She was born Lee Ann Merriweather, May 27th, 1935, in Los Angeles, California. Her parents were Claudius Greg Merriweather and Ethel Eve Mulligan. She has one brother, three years younger, named Don Brett Merriweather. When she was four years old, the family moved to Phoenix, Arizona. And when she was in the fifth grade, her father was transferred to San Francisco, so they moved again. Lee says that she had a great childhood and that her family was very loving. And when she attended George Washington High School in San Francisco, one of her fellow classmates was Johnny Mathis. And when he became famous too, he was asked, Do you remember Lee Merriweather from school? And he said, Yes, I do. She was the pretty one with curling rollers in her hair. Lee says that when her friend brought her that article and she read it, she laughed her butt off and said, that really was me. I had rollers in my hair all the time because I wanted to train it. Someone really loves you. Guess who? Then when Lee attended college at City College of San Francisco, she had another famous classmate. This time it was Bill Bixby. Bill went on to play Tim O'Hara on the TV show My Favorite Martian. Then he played Tom Corbett in The Courtship of Eddie's Father. And of course, he played Dr. David Banner in The Incredible Hulk. In college, she went for a television and theater arts degree. And her fellow theater students, along with her fraternity, nominated her for Miss San Francisco, so she entered the pageant. She said if it wouldn't have been for them, she wouldn't have done it. And it's a good thing she did because she won. And winning that automatically enrolled her in the 1954 Miss California pageant, which she also won. Lee said that day was amazing because both of her parents were in attendance and when she was announced as the winner, she looked right out at them and they were experiencing the same emotions at the same time. Shock, disbelief, joy and happiness. And she could even hear her father yelling, That's my daughter! That's my daughter, Miss California! She said it was like a dream, very surreal. Now, winning the title of Miss California automatically enrolled her in the Miss America pageant that was to take place in a few months. So she went back to college, was doing her thing, living her life, when all of a sudden, unexpectedly, her father passed away. Now, this devastated her and her mother. She said it was a very horrible time, just three weeks away from the Miss America pageant, and it was total confusion in the household. We were mourning, and I had no intention of going to the contest, and I wasn't even going to my college classes. But just one week before the event, her mother sat her down and said, Look, you have college scholarships that you earned and you deserve them. You work so hard. You have to continue on. And your father and I have been your biggest supporters. We love you. And there's no way that he would want his passing to stop you from following your dreams. You've seen how happy he was when you won Miss California. Please, Go to Atlantic City. You have to continue on. Your father and I will both be with you in your heart. Lee said she showed up in Atlantic City and realized this event was way bigger than Miss California. There were reporters and cameramen from everywhere, newspapers, magazines, and everybody wanted an interview. And the women from all the other states were just so beautiful and talented. She said, I was overwhelmed. But once the contest started, I began to settle down because I was doing really good in each event and I started to feel pretty confident. But then when they announced that I was in the top 10 and then the final five, I really got nervous. I was trying to keep my composure as each girl was eliminated, but when it got down to just two of us, I started to shake. And then when they announced that I won, I broke down crying, and in my head, I was saying, Daddy, I won. 
She said it took her quite a while to calm down, and she may have been the first one they ever had to sit down before they could put the crown on her. So Lee becomes Miss America 1955, and within one week, she starts to appear everywhere. She's even on television. The game show, What's My Line? Now they make the panel wear blindfolds so they can't see who she is, and they only have a certain amount of time and guesses to figure it out. Now Lee does something that no one else had done up until this point. She starts to disguise her voice, and she says and does little wacky sounds here and there to help throw people off track. And the audience loved it nationwide. Well, I heard the rustle of a skirt, uh, so I <laughs> presume this is a very attractive lady. Uh, do you have a, a job that puts you in front of the public at all? Mmm, yeah, yes. If she says, yeah, yes, again, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> have you appeared on television? Mmm, yeah, yes. I am now. <laughs> well, may I ask, did you participate in any way in this beauty contest business in Atlantic City during the past week. Yes. Oh, she <laughs> loves it. Huh? Uh, well, let's start at the top. Did you by any chance win it? <laughs> yeah. I met Lee in Atlantic City, Imagine, and she's a wonderful gal, got great talents, had the courage to do a bit from Riders to the Sea in her talent competition and did it beautifully. Okay. Lee, it's wonderful to have you with us and a wonderful year and a grand future for all oh, the rest of your thank days. You Will very you say much. hello to the time? So her appearance on What's My Line directly led to her becoming the Today Girl on NBC's Today Show, which she says was great because the pageant also gave her scholarship money, which she used to enroll in Lee Strasberg School and got to train directly under him. Now, if you don't know who Lee Strasberg is, check out my Tina Louise, who played Ginger on Gilligan's Island video. She went there also. At this point, Lee was super busy. She was studying acting. She was on the Today Show. And, of course, she had all of her Miss America obligations, such as personal appearances all around the country. She was at baseball games and appearing in advertisements. Plus, people wanted her to model their clothes. The next year, she had to pass on her crown to the new Miss California and then the new Miss America. But this didn't slow her down one bit because she was now starting to appear on Matinee Theater and the Alcoa Television Hour. So things were happening. Then in 1957, she appears in her first television series, Men of Annapolis, episode The Challenge. Excuse me. Would you see that this gets to the governor's daughter? Is this another invitation to the dance? How'd you know? Midshipman Terry Ryan delivered one yesterday exactly like it. She hasn't accepted it, has she? Well, she has. She hasn't told me. Good. I'm still in the running. Good evening, gentlemen. Won't you come in? There's something funny going on here. Hey, I'm Paula Woodruff. Hello. Oh, we met in the garden, remember? But I thought you were the gardener's daughter. <laughs> I know you did. It was a mean trick, and I'm sorry. I didn't expect both of you. We couldn't come to a decision, so we're both escorting you. Which means that half the dancers go to Conway, the other half to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> was played by Lee Ann Merriweather. Now, 1958 was a pretty big year for Lee. She ended up marrying fellow actor Frank Aletter, and he ended up with his own TV show later on called Bringing Up Buddy, and Lee appeared in one episode of that. But also in 1958, she was on four TV shows, Omnibus, The Millionaire, Dragnet, and The Phil Silver Show. Natalie Rumpelmeyer? No, the Natalie Rumpelmeyer you want is my aunt. This is her niece. Uh, hi, Roger. Hi, Dollface. Here I am. The lady told the title. Oh, are we going to have a time tonight? And on the flip side of the record is a real sender. Rocket ship, rock and roll. <laughs> Come on, Natalie, get with it. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. Look, I don't feel up to anything tonight. I'd like to listen to records some other time, okay? Whatever you say, pet, but uh, don't wait too long. Someone might pick me off. <laughs> and here she appears on Leave It to Beaver, episode Community Chest. Excuse me, lady, but this dumb kid lost the money it gave him yesterday. <laughs> For the community chest? Some of the people are giving them the money again because they feel sorry for him for being so dumb. Well, I think I can take care of that. Just a second. There you go. Thank you very much, Lee. You're welcome. Then in 1959, she appears in her first movie, a psychological sci-fi thriller called 4D Man. It's a freaky scene. <laughs> who crossed a new threshold. Lee Merriweather, the former Miss America, and James Congdon in a story of brothers whose love for the same girl started a devastating chain reaction. Got to help me. Starting in 1960, she was on every TV show you could think of, and some of these were reoccurring roles. She played Nurse Bonnie on Dr. Kildare for eight episodes, while she was also on the young married soap opera playing Ann Reynolds. And of course, she was on everything else like Route 66, The Detective, and here's one, The Man from Uncle. I was just checking this out for you. Rush is issuing a few of these to our more uh, important agents. What is it? It's an ordinary fountain then. Until you twist this to the right, then to the left. This weapon transmits an ultrasonic concussion of tremendous force. You press it against the head of your, uh... The brain, in effect, is homogenized. Death is instantaneous, of course. It's around this time that the happy couple decides to start their family. So Lee has her first daughter named Kyle, and then two years later, she has a second daughter named Leslie. Now, this didn't slow her down one bit. She was still all over television. Things like Perry Mason, The Fugitive, My Three Sons, and F Troop, one of my favorites. Oh, O'Rourke's name, ma'am. Sergeant Morgan O'Rourke. Name's O'Reilly. Lily O'Reilly. Well, big I shouldn't be going now. A daughter of the old son. A chip off the old blarney. Now, what can an O'Rourke do for an O'Reilly? Oh, Begora, you could be showing me to the real estate office. You're planning to buy a house in these parts? Yes, I'm going to set up business here. Oh, how nice. Just what this town needs, a little dress shop. Oh, no, I'm opening a saloon. We're the O'Reilly's from County Court. <laughs> Then in 1965, she lands a reoccurring role on the 12 O'Clock High TV series playing Captain Phyllis Vincent. Captain Vincent, get me General Martinez, Chief Headquarters. Yes, sir. Captain Ryan. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. General Pritchard calling General Martin and scramble the call, please. You're uh, Lieutenant Wilson, aren't you? Yeah. Well, Colonel Gallagher is in with the general and... Uh, Mind if I wait? You're uh, working late tonight. Well, there is a war on, you know. You uh, must be real tired, I'll bet. <laughs> Going uh, right on home? Uh, I've got nothing special on if you uh, feel like having some dinner. Well, that's very kind of you, Lieutenant, but, well, I, I already have a date. Ah, <laughs> denied. Now, in 1966, she's asked to appear in her second movie. This time, the character she'll be playing is a little bit different. She's going to be Catwoman. <laughs> Riddler's right for once. It's now or never if we're to get through the channel. Well, make up your mind. I say it's crazy. But I say let's try it. We have to do something to get Batman out of the way. Now in this movie, Catwoman's alter ego is a Russian woman called Miss Kitka, and Lee plays her pretty good, or should I say, perfectly. Ahoy, Catwoman! Imbecile, how many times have I told you never use my real name in public? Puffed up penguin! Our friends make peace. Have a shake on me. <laughs> United Underworld. 
How did it go, Catwoman? Perfectly. Perfectly. How's our prisoner? Still doesn't know he's been kidnapped? He hasn't the foggiest. So in the movie, Bruce Wayne doesn't know that Miss Kitka is really Catwoman. And Catwoman doesn't know that Bruce Wayne is really Batman. And the two of them get together and get a little frisky. About that dream you had. Do we dare? Why not? Miss Kitka, I have the strangest feeling that I am about to be utterly and madly carried away. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is a kidnap! Our joke's on you! <laughs> You filthy criminals. Now later on, Batman does catch Catwoman, and that's when he realizes that she's also Miss Kitka. And boy, does it hurt him. Say no more, Robin. It could be compromising. It's just one of those things in the life of every crime fighter. It means nothing. Snap on the bat cuffs. Although the fans enjoyed Lee playing Catwoman in the movie, the studio went with Julie Newmar to play Catwoman for the TV series. Now in the second season, they did bring Lee in to play Lisa Carson in two episodes because they liked her chemistry with Adam West and they even threw in a little hint that she had previously been Catwoman with the milk and cookies reference. Would you like to come in for a glass of milk and cookies? I wonder if that would be wise, Lisa. You're a very beautiful woman and you'd make some lucky man a marvelous wife. Unfortunately, I'm not that man. Don't I get a goodbye kiss? Well, you insist. I do. Milk and cookies, did you say? So, after her appearances and all of the Batman stuff, she gets her own reoccurring role in a new TV show called The Time Tunnel. She plays Dr. Anne McGregor. What do you make of them? Cavalry, post-Civil War. How do you know it's after the Civil War? The only mounted U.S. troops were dragoons until the Civil War. We're getting a time fix. I still can't locate them in space yet. This is General Kirk. Call the Indian Bureau. I want someone from the history department who's familiar with the Indian Wars period. I want him today. I have a time reading. Summer 1876. General Kirk. Dr. Charles Whitebird of the State University. Dr. Ann McGregor. How do you do? I understand you want an authority on the Indian Wars period. We need to identify an historical period. I'm getting something. Those are the most authentic films I've seen. Doctor, those aren't films. That is the living past. The technique and engineering are classified, Doctor. But what you're seeing there is reality. What would you like to know about them? Can you tell us the reason for the meeting? What they're doing? My relatives are cooking up a big pot of trouble, I'd say. I'm pure blood soup. There's Tony. Lost him. Lee was in all 30 episodes of the series before it was canceled, and it's a shame that it was because a lot of you in my comments have mentioned Time Tunnel as one of your favorites. And if you've never seen it before and you like Star Trek, I think it'd be right up your alley. So check it out if you can find it online. I know it's on Amazon Prime. And speaking of Star Trek, she was in the episode called That Which Survives. Who are you? That is not important. You are Lieutenant Sulu. You were born on the planet Earth. You're helmsman for the Enterprise. You do not understand. I have come for you. I want to touch you. Stop or shoot. I don't want to have to kill a woman. <laughs> Who are you?
I know you Trekkies remember that episode. Now just think of all the iconic stuff she's already been on just in the 60s. Time Tunnel, Star Trek, Batman, and Mission Impossible eight times playing Tracy. Here's a freaky episode. It even has Leonard Nimoy. That's right, Mr. Spock in it. Check it out. Think. Think. How much do they know? How much do they know? I will tell you for the last time, Herr Rednitz. The Fraulein will be tried at SS headquarters. She won't last the night. We must know how much she told them. As a matter of fact, she is dead. Prepare number one torpedo tube. She is still alive. And I say she is dead. I told you it was freaky. Now here she is, the mother giant on the land of the giants. What's that smoke over there? I don't know. Now, where are the children? Well, they were here just a minute ago. Inspector, uh, Lieutenant Emar thinks that the little people are almost through the caved-in obstruction. Then in 1970, she was on the FBI TV series five times, looks like eight other TV shows for one appearance, and she was on the new Andy Griffith show, all ten episodes. Oh. Surprise! 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 Look at you! You remember my wife, Lee? Yeah. These these are our children, Lori and TJ, Hoover, Emmett. Think of that, she played the wife of Andy Griffith. That's pretty wild. Now, as that show came to an end, she was still all over television, but her marriage was falling apart. The two of them started to live separately and filed for divorce. She said, luckily, my mother was there for me and she always had been. She was my babysitter. I never used a daycare or anyone else. But right then, I had to have her move in with me, and she helped raise my kids for the next eight years. Because in 1973, she landed the role of Betty Jones on the new TV series, Barnaby Jones. Starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather. You may just be looking at the most complicated trigger ever used to kill a man. What is it? This? Is a portable computer terminal. Well, how? You could have activated that crane from any phone booth like this. Lee says that her time on Barnaby Jones was just wonderful and that Buddy Ebsen became her mentor and she loved him and that he's a prime example of nice guys not always finishing last. Then it wasn't a short found in the computer terminal. I don't think so. And Summers has the perfect alibi. Not if I can tie him to the Kelso fix. The show ran for eight years and Lee was in 178 episodes. So when it ended in 1980, she wasn't panicked for work because she said that it already had done so much for her financially and professionally, she could just feel more was coming. And it was. She married Marshall Borden in 1986, and the 1980s were just filled with shows that she was on multiple times, like The Love Boat three times, Murder, She Wrote three times, Chips twice, Fantasy Island, Hotel, and then in 1988, The Monsters Today. (laughs) Marilyn, why don't you tell me what's bothering you? Aunt Lily, what makes you think there's anything bothering me? We all have to be honest and open with one another, like, like
Like the Cosby family, like the, and like the Adams family. <laughs> oh, no, you tell me, what's the matter? A lot of people don't realize this, but The Munsters Today was on the air from 1988 through 1991, and Lee played Lily Munster in all 78 episodes. That's a pretty good run. Aunt Lily, it's my movie. Now that's the way it has to be. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, after all, you are, you are the director. <laughs> but after that, she did it again. This time, she went into the soap operas. She played on All My Children as the character Ruth Martin from 1996 all the way to 2011. <laughs> Another amazing run. It was during these same years that Lee also decided to stop coloring her hair. And it turns out her hair is naturally silver. And she said, heck, if it can work for Buddy Epson, it can work for me. And I have to agree, it looks great on her. Now, before we go any farther, I gotta say this. Lee's family was very close-knit. They stuck together. And her mother was right by her side, helping raise the granddaughters all the way into adulthood. There are a hundred pictures online of the four of them out and about, and it's heartwarming. If you're like me, then you're curious what became of her daughters. Well, Leslie Aletter became a stunt person in 1987 and has appeared in over a hundred movies and television shows. She's also been the standalone double for Sigourney Weaver in every Aliens movie since that time. Also, She's Sherry Moon Zombie stunt double in all of the Rob Zombie films, which is another connection to The Munsters. As for Kyle a letter, in 1983, she was in the audience of The Price is Right and got called to come on down. And then she made it all the way to the showcase showdown, which she lost. But she was offered a job. Holly Hallstrom had just left the show to focus on her acting career, so they brought in Kyle as a temporary replacement, but she lasted 12 years. That's when she left the show to focus on her family-owned business with her husband, Rory Oldham, and the two of them have been happily married ever since. As for Lee, she's also happily married and enjoys spending quality time with her family. Now, as of October 17th, 2022, Lee is 86 years old and in good health. She says that in 2020, she stopped making public appearances, but in 2023, she plans to return. She said she really misses the connection between people when they bring up a piece of memorabilia for her to sign or they tell her a quick story and that's something that she wants to experience again. Time for some cool pictures that I found along the way. That is Julie Newmar, Eartha Kitt, and Lee Merriweather, the triple threat of Catwoman. Classic. Now the last picture is Lee Merriweather and Kit Shapiro, daughter of Eartha Kit. You should know who she is if you're a super fan of this channel because my Eartha Kit video fits right in with all of these. Gotta warn you though, it is really powerful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was another happy ending and I love those. Now, I don't make videos very often, so you might want to subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll be back in the future with more cool classics.